In the previous video, I showed you how to directly measure a liquid volume using a graduated cylinder. How you can pour the liquid in and just measure the mark to which the liquid reaches and then round off to the nearest tenth. In this video, I'm going to show you something similar but different. I'm going to show you how to measure the volumes of irregular objects still using this graduated cylinder, but this time we're going to be measuring using a technique known as volume by displacement. And that's what we're going to be focused on for this lesson. How do you measure irregular solids by water displacement? The steps are going to be quite different from measuring a liquid directly, but they start off the same. First, you're going to fill the graduated cylinder part way with a liquid. We're just going to use water because it's cheap and easy to use. So we fill a graduated cylinder part way with water. Now you got to be careful on this step. You can fill it as much as you want within reason. You need to make sure there's enough in the cylinder so that when you submerge an object, it's going to go all the way underneath the water. But you also want to make sure that there's not so much that when you submerge an object, it's going to push the water level up past the scale and you won't be able to read it. So usually a good rule of thumb is to fill your device halfway with water. I would fill this cylinder up to the 25 milliliter mark because it goes up to 50 milliliters. Now that we filled our cylinder with water, we're almost ready to put an object into it. But first you have to ask yourself, am I also measuring the mass of the object? If I want to measure the mass of an object, I want to make sure I do that first before I put it in the graduated cylinder because its mass is going to change when it has water molecules clinging to the outside of it because it's all wet. You want to make sure that if you're going to measure the mass, you do that before you put the object into the graduated cylinder full of water. Step two is to measure the amount of water that you start with in the graduated cylinder in tenths. You're measuring to the tenths place of precision. So now we know how much water we're starting with. The next step is to drop the solid object into the graduated cylinder. And the safest way to do this to get the most accurate reading is to just slide the object down the cylinder when you tilt the cylinder slightly off to the side. The reason we do that is twofold. First of all, if you're using a glass graduated cylinder, you don't want the bottom to break out because you drop something in too heavily. Sliding it down gently is a much better technique. And secondly, if you drop the object in, you could splash some water up onto the sides of the cylinder. And when you lose that water, your measurement becomes a little bit less accurate. Step four then is to measure the new amount of water in the cylinder. Now, it's honestly the same water as before, but it's been pushed upward by the object that is now submerged underneath the water. And how much did it go up? Do you realize that it actually goes up the same amount as the volume of the object that you put in it? By subtracting how much water there originally was from where the water is now, we're going to get the change in volume of the water in the graduated cylinder and that's going to tell us the volume of the object that we put in. That's the volume. Now, let's look at this visually because just doing it with words doesn't necessarily explain it well enough. Let's make sure that you understand. Here is a graduated cylinder with some water in it. We're going to drop this rock into the graduated cylinder to find its volume. Now, if we're measuring the density of the rock, I'm going to want to measure its mass first before I drop it in. Okay, so I put it on a balance, I've got its mass. Next, I'm gonna measure the original amount of water in the graduated cylinder. Here, as I look at this amount of water, um, I can't measure super precisely, but it looks like it's right around 46 milliliters. Now, if you were measuring it using your graduated cylinder, you would measure to the tenths place of precision because your cylinders are able to do that. This one's just not as clear and not as precise. Once I have that 46, milliliter volume, I'm going to drop in the object that I'm measuring and notice the water level goes up. Now I've marked so you can see where the old water level was at 46 and the new water level is somewhere around 62, 63 milliliters. Let's say it's 63 milliliters. So I went from 46 all the way up to 63. The difference between those two numbers, let's, let's take the new amount, which is 63, 
and subtract the original amount, which was 46, 63 minus 46 is 17 milliliters. That means that this rock has a volume of 17 milliliters. That's how much it pushed the water level up from its original amount. That is how you measure by displacement. Now that I've showed you in instruction form how to measure density by displacement, I am now going to show you how to measure density by displacement visually. Here I have 20 popcorn kernels and I'm going to measure their density. Now keep in mind, the density of 20 popcorn kernels is the same as the density of one popcorn kernel, is the same as the density of 100 or 1000 popcorn kernels. Density doesn't change for the amount of the substance. As I have more of these, the mass will change. It will get bigger with more popcorn kernels. The volume will change. It will get bigger with more popcorn kernels. But the density of popcorn kernel is always the same number. I'm going to use about 20 of them because if I were to just use one, it would be really hard to figure out exactly what its volume is because it won't, by displacement, push the water up enough. Now that I have the mass of these 20 popcorn kernels from the balance, I'm going to remove the balance and the popcorn kernels. I'm going to put in place my graduated cylinder. And the next step is for me to fill my graduated cylinder with a certain amount of water. I'm going to pour the water into the graduated cylinder. And remember, it doesn't really matter how much water you use. A good rule of thumb is to fill your graduated cylinder about halfway up the scale. So now I need to read the original water volume in my graduated cylinder. And as I get down really close to the scale, I read this original water volume to be 49.3 milliliters of water. 49.3 milliliters. Okay, the next step is to take my popcorn kernels and I'm going to add them to the graduated cylinder. The best way to add things is to tip the graduated cylinder diagonal and just slide the things that you're adding gently down the side so they don't make too much of a splash as they enter. So I've added my popcorn kernels and we went from 49.3 to, as I read this scale very, very closely, from the very bottom of the meniscus, this is exactly 50.0, exactly 50.0 milliliters. The bottom of that meniscus is just barely kissing the 50 line. So I went from 49.3 to 50 milliliters. When I take that final amount, 50, and subtract from it the original amount, 49.3, I find that these popcorn kernels have a volume of 0.7 milliliters. And if I divide the mass by that volume, I will have the density of popcorn kernels. That is how you measure volume by displacement and how you use that volume with the mass to find the density.